In the central part of Iran, if the food has no meat, it's like someone has no father and mother. I think I'm going to like the central part. Today, we're leaving Iran's capital of Tehran and heading into the unknown. Persian cuisine has its own unique culinary identity. But each region of Iran is also serving up one-of-a-kind local favorites that you can only find there. Today, we're heading south, diving deep into ancient Persian tradition. I've never had any cooking with pomegranate paste. Discovering foods and spices that do much more than fill your belly. I have a friend who's losing his hair. What do you recommend for that? And sinking our fingers into Iran's most irresistible cuisine. Can I use my left hand too? Yes, of course, why not? Good morning from Iran. Today is a very special day as we are leaving the mega city of Tehran and heading to a city called Kashan. Let's see what awaits us there. It's this way. And, um, and I'm gonna walk the whole way. Okay, let's get in the car and go. Right now, we're headed south toward Kashan, a city of 300,000 squished between deserts and mountains. But first, we're stopping off in the small village of Barzok. This village is famous for its rose water production and the preservation of traditional homes with meter thick walls made of straw and clay, keeping the inside cool. Another way to stave off the heat fresh juice. Hi there. Yeah. How are you so good at getting up in the tree? I didn't see any ladder used. <laughs> because I'm rock climber and do that. Do you want to go climb it up? No, I, I just, um, I'll give you moral support. <laughs> this is Targol. She's on a mission to preserve traditional culture in her village, including handicrafts and the meal she's making for us today. What are we doing with the berries? We make uh, jam and sweet drinks and sometimes making lavashai. I know that one. Oh my gosh, that's tremendous. Very delicious. Do you think maybe I could sneak another one? <laughs> These blackberry trees are tenacious, surviving semi-arid heat, unpredictable rainfall, and still bearing tremendously sweet fruit. I want to try one of these kingberries, just raw. Raw. <laughs> you know, it's not cooked yet. Oh, that is so sour. How do you turn that into juice? Uh, we put some sugar on it and boil it for one or two hours. And then it becomes this. Yeah. To your health. To your health. Oh yeah, that must have a lot of sugar to tame the sourness one, of that berry. One kilo kingberry, one kilo sugar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is the main industry here? It's famous for rose water. It's a special kind of rose. Yeah, it has many uh, uses. It's for uh, baking and cooking, relaxing for stomach, for heart. Women use this for hair and face. What about growing hair? Uh, no, no, just for shining. Do you have anything for growing hair? I'm, I'm, I'm losing mine, plus I burnt half of it off. And you say, you can use garlic. Yeah, but then it's like, I've got great hair, but no girl wants to come around me, you know? Food in Iran is not fast food. Meal prep is a serious commitment, sometimes taking hours. And today, Targol is displaying the area's traditional favorites, and all of them require lamb meat. So here we have basically a whole half of a lamb. And so what part did you ask for? I asked him for a special food and they know that what we need. Wow. When I was in Tehran, I had a good amount of vegetarian dishes like uh, ash. Yeah. But here, your full menu, everything has meat. Yes, in the central part of Iran especially, we say if the food has no meat, it's like someone has no father and mother. I think I'm gonna like the central part. Yeah. I really like <laughs> me. You like me, yeah. Absolutely. With ingredients in hand, Targol is ready to begin. Starting with her first dish, known locally as Gushto Lubia Polo Shivi. Gushto Lubia Polo Shivi. Polo? Polo. Shivi. Shivi. Yeah. Gushto Lubia Polo Shivi. Yeah. Got it. <laughs> So right now we're in your kitchen. Yeah. It's like a very traditional kitchen for Iran, right? Yeah. Now I should put some meat. Yeah, sorry, I don't want to bring yeah. your food. Let's do it. Anytime there's lamb involved, she sautés it with onion to remove any gaminess. She adds a little turmeric and a lot of cinnamon. 
One of the keys to Persian cooking is understanding that some foods are considered to have a hot nature and others a cold nature. Every food in Iran is either hot or cold? Uh, no, we balance them in their food. For example, cucumber. If you eat many cucumber, you became a stomachache. It has a cold Nature. Good, I won't take any bites of any cucumber. <laughs> the food you should eat is also dictated by whether or not your own nature is hot or cold. What is your nature, hot or cold? I'm the balanced one, not hot, not cold. The doctor said me, you can eat everything. Do I seem like a balanced person? I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think in, so. In the nature, maybe. I'll find out which I am later. When the meat turns golden brown, she adds white beans and water, braising it for four hours until it becomes tender. In many parts of Iran, the distinction between food, spices, and medicine is not so clear, as I'm about to find out. We're in a factory. Yeah. What kind of factory is this? Actually, it's a distillation factory, which is used in every season for a special herb. This is Farid. He's here to walk me through the ancient science of Persian medicinal extraction. So we have three vessels that he's going to be working on today. Four. Four. Do you have arthritis? This place has what you need. Diabetes? Sure, that too. Can't get aroused like you used to in your 20s? They can solve it. This is Zenyan, a local herb. What is this one good for? Zenyan is good for digestive system and uh, good for uh, sex also. All right! <laughs> if you use it uh, as a drink or maybe in your food, can have some effects on you. That's because they uh, heat you up. It heats you up. I'm <laughs> okay. good for digestive system. No, I got that part. I could just take some Pepto-Bismol for yeah. that. But I mean, to wake up the reproductive system, that's a pretty rare quality. That's yeah. nice. Can I get a bunch of that to take home with me? Yeah, of course. All right, sounds good. Extractions of all kinds are produced here. They can be taken straight or mixed with food as you often see with rose water. Aside from what we're making over there, there's some really unique flavors here. Cumin water. Huh? If you are uh, so fat, you can use this. If you're wow. so fat? Muscular. <laughs> All right, great. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Human water. Cheers. Okay. It tastes like we extracted the flavor from some tacos. Yeah. Have you ever had a taco? Yeah. Do you like tacos? Yes. We'll get along. <laughs> what else can we try? Shikuri. It whitens your skin. Great. So if you're tan, you can use this. You feel white? Whiter than before. <laughs> A little bit. It just has a little bit of woody taste, but none of these are intense at all. They're all, it's a hint of flavor. Finally, the cinnamon. Oh, that smells great. Yeah. That's lot. very nice. It's a bit sweet, even. Yeah. Sweet and cinnamony. Uh, cin cinnamon. C cinnamony. Cinnamony. <laughs> You've been slaving away, like really creating a masterpiece here for the last four hours to bring this all together. Such an, an incredible effort, and I can't wait to try it out. Thank you so much. You're welcome. What do we start with? <laughs> ah, I heard that you could get killed for stealing too much of yeah, this. Yeah, for potato tatty. <laughs> it's the under the rice. Mm. Just, oh. <laughs> okay, good. Enough talking, let's go for it. Oh, hearty and crispy. It's like the best potato chip I've ever had. I can see why people fight for that. <laughs> Along with the gusto lubia polo shavid, we have two other main dishes. First, chef de anar. I'll call it pomegranate meatballs. Grated onion mixed with minced lamb meat, turmeric, cinnamon, pepper, and chili powder. Add chickpea flour and egg. Make some balls by hand and saute in oil. Mmm. Oh, that's very nice. So meaty, juicy, it's kind of sweet too. Do you ever put that sauce onto the rice? In some cities, people do that. Okay. But in Kashan, no. No, oh my gosh, Kashan, what are you doing to me? <laughs> Next, Tas Kebab, a famous Kashani eggplant dish. Eggplant fried on both sides, then cooked with lamb meat, tomato, and Kashan's signature pomegranate paste. Here, the eggplant has become super soft. Mm, that's very good, it's very hearty. For me, the flavor is overall very mild. Mild enough that I can taste the nuance of the tomato, the turmeric, like all the different seasonings, flavors really come out. I've never had any cooking with pomegranate paste. We have some foods with pomegranate paste. It gives it some nice sweetness. When is the last time you cooked a meal like this? Every day we cook one of them, 
for、mm. the family. Okay, you、And、wouldn't usually make all three because I thought this、yes. was like an overload of meat. I'm like, man, are people yeah, yeah, really yeah. eating this much meat? But this is a special occasion. Yeah. I'll scoop up some of this one. Wow, lamb, beans. Oh wow, look at this. This is like enough for a coal miner. <laughs> Slow cooked lamb, so soft. And the secret to a delicious bouchlubia is the use of bone、mm -hmm. and a long time cooking. It sounds like sometimes you cook it; it takes even longer. Yeah. Or grandmoms put it on the warmer from early in the morning till noon. Well, for me, it's a lot of ingredients I wouldn't normally see. Using a lot more cinnamon with the meat, something sweet like pomegranate paste is very different,、mm -hmm. but absolutely delicious. Day two, Kashan. We've arrived at the bazaar, one of the jewels of the city, with outstanding 19th-century architecture. This place has everything: roses, textiles, silver handicrafts. And I'm here to find out if my own nature is hot or cold. I have a friend who's losing his hair, especially around here. What do you recommend for that? This is a spice shop. Dried plants you've never heard of, herbs, blends, spices. This is the intersection between medicine and seasoning. People can buy spices for cooking, but also look for remedies to improve their hair. I mean, health. Their health. It's a soap. This is good for hair roots. Who's this guy? <laughs> One of the oldest spice men. So this is for my friend. Obviously, my hair is fine and kind of lush and thick and beautiful. But I was wondering. I've heard a lot about people talking about being like a hot or a cold person or a balanced person.、Yeah. And I was wondering if you could look at me, kind of size me up, and tell me which I am. When you get up in the morning, does you taste a special thing in your mouth? Yeah, terrible breath, morning breath. Bitter、okay. or salty? Bitter. In Iran, I definitely do. It's hot here. A normal amount, like eight. Is that normal? It says you are balanced, tempered, not、really? cold, not hot. When you look at me, is there anything else that's obviously wrong with me? Yeah, it says you should avoid sweet, even rice and potato. Well, that's pretty obvious. According to Targol, since I'm balanced in nature, I can eat everything. Got it. Including our final Kashani delicacy. Can you tell me more about where we are right now? Yeah, we are in、uh, one of the old houses in Kashan, Falahati House. This is one of the old historical houses of Kashan. Once owned by a merchant over 100 years ago, it used to house an entire extended family in over 20 different rooms. And now it's a hotel. It was、uh, Mr. Falahati's house. Merchants of carpets and textile. He was selling a lot of carpet. Yes, a lot of carpet. Yeah. Today we're going to be served up Kashan's best stewed lamb and porridge, known locally as kachi. Kachi porridge and meat. That's all. It looks amazing. First, the porridge. Kachi can be cooked in other cities in different way, but in Kashan we make this with split wheat. Split wheat, broken wheat, or what some call couscous. It is highly nutritious, and when it's cooked, it has a hearty, warm taste and a vibrant yellow hue. Now the meat, lamb that's been stewed for two hours with carrots, green bell peppers, onion, salt, pepper, garlic, and celery. Let's、uh, dig in, huh? Yes. All right. You will start. <laughs> Why would I start? This is the trouble I have in Iran. People are so polite. They always want me to go first, except I don't know what I'm doing. So this is the kind of food we eat with our hands. Yes. Can I use my left hand too? Yes, of course. Why not? Oh, it's pretty solid now. It feels nice. Grab a little meat and the onion. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> Do you want to have some too? Yes. Oh, that's outstanding. That porridge is so thick; it's almost becoming like a solid again. How do you say? Like, is it yummy? Is it delicious? Koshmaze. Koshmaze. Ali. Ali. Oh, he showed me his style is a little different. He grabs some meat first and then dip it like a nachos in a seven-layer dip, and then his hands are still clean. Cinnamon. 
And the secret to a delicious kachi mm. is the meat. So the more delicious the meat, the more delicious the whole product. I do like the onion a lot. The onion adds some sweetness, and then that lamb is so tender. Are people still eating this way today, or is this like old-fashioned, traditional? Yes, in the city, but um, more in the villages. And I have to tell you that this is a sign of unity, mm. that everybody is a friend, so nobody hates each other, and it's better feeling when you eat this. <laughs> what do you say? It says, this is your lunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is everybody's this lunch. This is everybody's lunch. <laughs> Even in Iran's modern, fast-paced society, you can still see glimpses of ancient Persian traditions living on in a place that has one of the oldest cultures on Earth. Also, I'll let you know if my friend is able to grow his hair back using Persian medicine. From researching and shooting to editing and mastering, our 10-person Best Ever Food Review Show team works hard to roll out the highest quality travel food entertainment twice a week. If you like what we do here, please consider supporting our Patreon. Patreon allows fans of the show to contribute a monthly sum and receive a load of extras like early video releases, private Q&As, and beyond. To learn more about our Patreon, check out the link in the description box down below. And if you can't give or don't even feel like it, that's okay too. <laughs> We're just happy you're here. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Peace. And be sure to check out our second channel, More Best Ever Food Review Show, for raw clips and deleted scenes that didn't make it into the show.